just joined us. So downstairs, uh, we've got a fully licensed bar. We have toilet facilities there downstairs at the back of the boat. Uh, you're welcome on the top deck. Of course, you get your best views up here, and it's a lovely afternoon. Uh, we do ask if you're on the top deck, try and stay seated for the uh, duration of the cruise, and just be really careful if you are moving around the boat. Okay, there are handrails on the stairs uh, to help you. So we're going to swing the boat around here. We're going to head into uh, the Love and I port side to the pier. Uh, so when we when we leave the London Eye, what I'll do is I'll, I'll jump back on this microphone. I'm going to do a bit of a safety briefing with you. But uh, in the meantime, just sit back, relax, enjoy the sunshine, and I will speak to you in a couple of minutes' time. Oh, that's better. Welcome aboard. In your lua. Right, what we're going to do for you, we're going to take you up river. We're going back up towards Westminster Bridge, and you're going to get a nice view of the Palace of Westminster. And we're going to swing the boat around, and we'll head down. But you'll also see County Hall, uh, and we'll get another view of the London Eye. All right, so then we're going to head down to Tower Peak. Now, as we leave the, the London Eye, a quick safety briefing for you, okay, guys? It's nothing to alarm you. It's just for your information, right? So it's a requirement that we deliver one uh, as we leave the pier. So the boat you're on today is called the Millennium of Peace. This boat is licensed by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, and it is fully equipped with life-saving appliances, okay? They are located around the boat, and the crew are fully trained in the use of that equipment. We're in communication with every boat on this river, as well as the Port of London authorities and emergency services at all times. Now, in the very unlikely case of emergency, remain calm, seated, and listen to your cruise instructions, okay? We're trained and we have licenses to be on this river, so you're in safe hands, okay, guys? But if that has alarmed anyone, 
Uh, good news for you, we've got a bar downstairs, all right? It does help calm the nerves. It's five o'clock somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, man. So there we go. We've also got toilets downstairs. Uh, just another request, if you're on the top deck, you try and stay seated for us, guys, okay? And just be really careful if you are moving around the boat. Now, you're on a sightseeing tour. What the company do is they provide you with an audio guide. Now, that's a, it's available to download. So there's a little QR code. It's on the leaflets. If you scan it, it goes to your phone, and it's done in about 13 different languages. But what we like to do on this boat is we like to stay on the microphone and do a little bit of a, a live commentary with you. Okay, so we'll point some sights out. We'll pass on a little bit of our local knowledge as we head down there. Would everyone like a bit of a live commentary this afternoon? Yeah? No problem. Word of warning though, we're not tour guys. Uh, we're here for your safety, so if I get anything wrong, keep it to yourself. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but I'll give it a go. Right, so we're back up here, uh, but we've done it for a good reason, okay? The Palace of Westminster ahead of us on the right, uh, one of the most iconic buildings in the United Kingdom. That is the second palace to stand on that side. This one you see today has been there for about 170 years. The previous palace burned down. Uh, there's only one surviving part of the original palace, that's Westminster Hall, and it dates back to around the 12th well, century. Now the building is more commonly known in the UK as the Houses of Parliament. Inside you've got the House of Lords, the House of Commons, and that is where our wonderful politicians work. That was sarcastic. <laughs> now hands up, can anyone see Big Ben? No, you can't. You can't see Big Ben. Big Ben is the name of the 13 and a half ton bell inside uh, that clock tower. It chimes on the hour every hour. The bell is also slightly cracked, just like the politicians. Yes, ah. <laughs> like the now the official name for that clock tower is the Elizabeth Tower. It's named after Queen Elizabeth II. It was actually renamed uh, in 2012. That was part of a Jubilee celebration. So previously it was known as the St. Stephen's Tower. There you go. You may have noticed we're turning. So we're going to head uh, that way, down river. Uh, one of the reasons we asked you to stay seated, you might have noticed we do sort of roll a little bit when we side on, okay, and these are quite heavy chairs, all right, so that's one of the reasons. But as we turn, on the right-hand side, uh, everything on the right is the south bank of the river, okay. I'll point a few things out to you on the south bank as we head down. It's a bit of an arts and cultural hub of the city. Uh, there's lots to see and do. One of the main features of the south bank, County Hall that white building on your right hand side it used to be home to the mayor of london but uh, as you can see there are more important things in there today treks adventure there's an aquarium there and ironically next to the aquarium there's a sushi bar but, uh, but no it's, it's worth a walk on the south bank it actually it takes about an hour and a half to get to tower bridge uh, from here so the london eye now, now the london eye okay it, it was originally opened as part of the millennium celebrations originally it was called the millennium whim uh, but uh, it was only a short-term project and it, it was only supposed to be there for five years as you can see it's still there and there's a good reason for that it makes a lot of money uh, in fact on a good day it is said it can make about a quarter of a million pounds so what? yeah you can see why they kept it they actually thought about renaming it the wheel of fortune <laughs> There are 32 pods on the London Eye. It's not a random number. Each pod represents one of the 32 boroughs of London. And on a clear day, you can see all 32 from the top. There, there you go, the London Eye. Uh, if you have a look on the left-hand side of the boat, uh, there's a, a grey boat over there called the Tattershall Castle. Uh, it's got the words pub on the Thames written on it. Now that used to be a paddle steamer that operated on the River Humber. That's in the north of England. Uh, now that boat was brought onto the River Thames many years ago. And originally, it opened up as an art gallery on the river. It then reopened as a pub, and it said it made more money in one day as a pub than it did in its entire existence as an art gallery. That tells you two things. One, a little bit about Londoners, and two, the prices they charge uh, in the Tattershall. But it is a nice place to visit. Now, on the way down to Tower, we're going to go under several bridges. This first bridge we're going to go under is Charing Cross Railway Bridge. It's flanked by the Golden Jubilee walkways. If you look to the left, that's Charing Cross Station uh, on your left hand side. It was designed to look like a steam train. Personally, I think it looks more like a jukebox myself, but there we are. Now, a bit of participation. Those of you on the top deck, what we encourage you to do at this point is uh, we're going to make a bit of noise here and we're going to wave. The, the captain tells you out. I'll explain why we do this in a minute, but give them a wave, guys. Here we go. Good afternoon, hello, guys. 
cheer up, mate. There we go. Right, th there is a reason we do this, okay? I'll explain. But there's another bridge, so we've got to have another go at that. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. So, the reason we get you to do that there is because if they're waving back at us, their hands are occupied and they're less likely to throw anything at the boat. <laughs> but look, don't be offended, right? If someone did wave back at you, seriously, don't be offended, it just means they're from London. They're absolutely miserable. Right, now, on your right side, so back on the south bank, and we're just passing a building called Royal Festival Hall, uh, the building with those flags there. That is the last remaining building from the Festival of Great Britain. That took place in 1951. It was a bit of a morale boosting festival after the Second World War. Uh, so inside that building, there's a theatre with world class acoustics. It is totally sound -free. And some of the best performers of all time performed at the Royal Festival Hall. The likes of Pavarotti, Michael Jackson, Amy Winehouse, and old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, has performed there. Another one of the features of the South Bank. Now, the, the next bridge, this is Waterloo Road Bridge, named after the Battle of Waterloo. Um, but uh, this is the second bridge to stand on this site. And what you see today, reconstruction started in 1939. Now, with the outbreak of the Second World War, a lot of the men constructing this bridge were sent off to fight. So the bridge was completed by the ladies of London. And that's why today on the river it's known as the Ladies Bridge. An almost entirely female workforce built this bridge. Now I've got a, a really good fact for you about this, you're going to like it. It remains the only bridge in London to have been built on time and under budget as well. So well done the ladies. It's actually made of Portland stone, that's quarried on the south coast of England. Uh, the stone has self-cleansing properties, so when water gets on the face of the bridge, it cleans itself, whereas underneath you can see where it doesn't get any rainwater, it's quite dirty. Back on the south bank, over on your right, uh, behind the trees, that grey building with the electronic advertisement board is our National Theatre. Now, it won't surprise you to hear that building on your right gets voted the ugliest building on the river every year. And that's because it looks more like a car park than a theatre, doesn't it? In fact, King Charles III himself, he described that building as a monstrous carbuncle. Uh, take it from me, that is not very good. But, uh, don't judge a book by its cover, guys. Uh, there are three theatres inside, uh, one of which being the Olivier Theatre, it's named after Lawrence Olivier, and it hosts some of the best shows in London. So that's our National Theatre. Now, just a little bit about the river itself. So the length of the Thames is 215 miles. Now, 90 miles of the river is tidal. Uh, and where we are in central London, the river's very tidal. So between high and low water, we can see a rise and fall in the water level of about seven, seven and a half metres. And that gives us roughly six knots of current. It's quite a dangerous river to fall into. Uh, we're at the moment experiencing an ebb tide. So we've had high water, water is now leaving the river into the North Sea, which is ahead of us. So we're kind of getting a, a bit of a push from the tide at the moment. If you look at the wall, either side of us, uh, you'll see it, towards the top of the wall, there's a sort of dark greenish line. That's the high water mark. So you can see how much we've been dropping over the last sort of hour and a half, two hours. Now the tide extends all the way to a town to the west of London called Teddington. Teddington actually means tide ending town. There you go. Just, uh, just on the left hand side, we're passing a white boat there called the HQS Wellington. Uh, it's a former New Zealand naval sloop. If you look at the back of the boat, the stern of the boat, we're just passing an archway on the embankment wall. That's called Temple Arch, and it's, it's a boundary marker. That's the boundary between the city of Westminster that we've just left and the city of London we're now in. Now the city of London stretches from here to Tower Bridge, that's where we're going. It's only one square mile in size and it has a population of about 10,000 people. The city of London is one of the UK's smallest cities. When you're thinking of London, you're actually thinking of Greater London. Now that comprises of the 32 boroughs I mentioned earlier, the city of London itself and has a population close to 10 million. So there's a very big difference, but we are now in the city of London itself. Have a look on your right hand side, uh, you'll see a red brick building here with the, the tower in the middle, that's the Oxo 
building on your right hand side. Any bricks on board, you, you recognise the brand. Yeah, that's where they used to make the Oxo stop for you. Very famous brand in the UK. No longer, of course. It's a very common theme on the river. All these old industrial buildings, warehouses, wharves, they've all been converted into totally unaffordable riverside property. So that building on your right, at the bottom, it's got luxury shops. In the middle, multi-million pound apartments. And at the top is the Harvey Nichols restaurant. If you went for dinner there this evening, you'd have to remortgage your house. It is not cheap. But uh, it's one of the top restaurants in London. But uh, yeah, if you come down to Greenwich with us, uh, you'll see a lot of these old warehouses uh, which have been converted into property today. Have a look on your left hand side. There's a bit of a construction site on your left. So they've built this new wall here. Uh, this is the Thames Tideway project. Uh, they are building London's Where new super sewer over there. And it's one of the biggest engineering projects in Europe today. Now you can't see most of the construction work because the new sewage system runs right underneath uh, the River Thames. Now it's replacing the old Victorian uh, sewage system. Now it's costing around five billion pounds, so it's not cheap. Much needed though, uh, it's due to be completed in 2025. <laughs> now ahead of us are two bridges. These are the Blackfriars bridges. The first one is a road bridge, and if you look at the pillars on this bridge, they were designed to look like church pulpits. And that's because there used to be a monastery, it was on the north bank on your left hand side. Hence the name Blackfriars as well, black the colour they wore, um, friars, monks, uh, hence the name Blackfriars. Now, on a really high tide, we can't get under this archway, okay, so we sometimes have to go through the one on your left. But it gives you an idea of how much we've dropped since high water. Uh, you can see we've got quite a bit of space now. As we go through this bridge, you'll see some red pillars either side of the boat. These red pillars are from the very first railway bridge, which is back in the time of Thames, designed by Isabard Kingdom Brunner. The, the second bridge is today's railway bridge. And this is actually a train station, so Blackfriars Station spans the width of the river. Now the station above you was designed and constructed to accommodate more people coming to London for the Olympics back in 2012. The only problem is they completed construction of the station in 2013. <laughs> nice job. On your right hand side, so you can see ahead of us on the right, the old Bankside power station there with the chimney. Now today that's the Tate Modern Museum for Modern Art. That's one of the world's largest modern art museums on your right hand side. If you look on the side of the building, you'll see it says it's free to enter. And if you've ever seen modern art, you'll know why. <laughs> I'm only joking. Now, a lot of London's museums are free to visit, okay? Some of the best in the world, free to visit. Have a look on your left, guys. You get a really nice view from the river of the dome to St Paul's Cathedral. So, one of the most famous landmarks in the city of London, uh, St Paul's. The, uh, the cathedral was open to the public in 1709. Uh, it was reconstructed after the Great Fire of London. That took place in 1666. The cathedral stands at 365 feet tall and it was the tallest building in London up until 1961. And that's because they actually had restrictions. Uh, nothing could be built taller than St Paul's Cathedral up until that point. And you can actually see, if you look around St Paul's, there is nothing, uh, anything taller. So there are still restrictions around the cathedral. Uh, and a nice place to visit. It's an, it's an amazing building. Uh, it's about 25 quid to get in. So a uh, bit, bit of advice for you. Go on a Sunday, uh, they'll let you in for free. It's a church. They do a church service. But the only thing is there will be someone going around with a collection bucket. But uh, you get a nice photo opportunity in a moment. Have a look to your left. As we go under the Millennium Footbridge, what you'll see is this bridge was actually built perfectly in line with St Paul's on your left-hand side. Some of you might recognise this bridge, used in one of the Harry Potter films, yeah? Uh, it's actually one of the most expensive scenes in all of the franchise. Now, have we got any Shakespeare fans on board? Yeah, a few of you at the back. Have a look on your right-hand side. Uh, there's a white building here with a thatched roof. That is a replica to William Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. That's built in the same style as the original Playhouse. That burned down. 1613. Uh, that actually burnt down during a performance of Henry VIII. Now, if you went to see a performance at the Globe Theatre during Shakespeare's time, if you got a cheap ticket in the standing section, it would cost you one penny. What they used to do was go round the theatre collecting the money in a box. At the end of the performance, they actually took the box to the box office where they counted it, and that is where we get the saying today from, box office. 
is from the old theatres in Southwark on your right hand side. How do I break these So to your right, this is the London borough of Southwark. To your left is the city of London. And this next bridge we're about to go under is Southwark Bridge. Second bridge to, to stand on this side, the one you see today, uh, built in 1921. They were built to alleviate congestion on London Bridge. But this is actually the quietest bridge in London. And that's because it's really hard to find. There's lots of one-way streets that lead to it. It's very confusing trying to find this bridge. So if you see anyone walking across this one, give them a wave. They're probably lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. They're not even looking down. Now, it's, it's a nice afternoon. Uh, and it's going to be a nice evening, so I assume some of you are probably looking for somewhere to go for a drink later. Well, there's a lovely pub on your right hand side, okay? It's called the Anchor, and it's got red windows. You can see it's quite popular. Uh, but uh, it's one of the oldest pubs on the river that we're about to pass. There's been a tavern there for over 400 years. Some, uh, some very famous people have had a drink in there. Uh, Samuel Pepys, the diarist, Dr. Johnson, William Shakespeare and his actors, and of course the captain and myself. In fact, that is where you'll find us this evening after work. And that's for research purposes. Yeah, for this guy, we have to do our research. Sometimes we do so much research in the anchor, we forget the next day what we researched the night before, so we have to go again. That's a lovely point. If you get a chance, it's well worth a visit. That one. So we're just going under Cannon Street Bridge here. When we come out the other side, there's, there's some, some nice examples of some of the old warehouses on the banks of the river. I was telling you about earlier. Uh, so you can see Winchester Wharves, Horseshoe Wharves, Pickford's Wharf there on your right hand side. Now, London was the busiest port in the world for over 300 years from the 16th century onwards. <laughs> ships came from all over the world to trade at these warehouses. Talking of ships, if you look on the right hand side, just beyond those people there, in that dry dock, there's a pirate ship uh, we're about to pass there. I don't want it. Anyone seen Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah? It's got nothing why to do with it. Why don't we go down to the bar again? I don't know why I mentioned it. Now that pirate ship on your right is a replica to Sir Francis Drake's Golden Hind. Now he was a privateer and that was during the time of Elizabeth I. He was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the world. It is said when he returned to London from that voyage around the world, he brought back so much stolen gold from the Spanish, it cleared this country's national debt for the first and last time. Now, this bridge we're approaching, you will all have heard of this bridge. Some of you might have travelled a very long way to see this bridge, so I hope you're not too disappointed. This is the one that keeps falling down. <laughs> London Bridge, guys. If you don't believe me, they've written it on the sign. London Bridge. Now, several bridges have spanned this section of the river. Uh, the first to build a bridge here were the Romans. That was over 2,000 years ago. The most famous London Bridge was the old medieval bridge. Now that was built in the 12th century and it spanned the river for 600 years. That bridge was considered a wonder of the world at the time. Now if, if you look on the left hand side, there's a gap in the buildings on your left and that is actually where the old London Bridge crossed the river from. Uh, in that gap there's a little church there, that's called St Magnus the Martyr. If you go in there, they've actually got a scale replica model of the old London Bridge, just if, if you're interested. Now, towering above you on your right uh, is the UK's tallest building, if you look up on the right hand side. That is the Shard, and it stands at over a thousand feet tall. Now, inside is a five star hotel, the Shangri La. There's bars, restaurants, uh, apartments in there are all valued between 30 and 50 million pounds. Uh, and uh, there is actually a viewing platform towards the top of the Shard. Now, it's about 30 quid to go up there. So, I've got another tip for you. On the left hand side, uh, there is a, a building that sort of gets wider as it goes up. It's got that crane at the top. That's 20 Fenchurch Street, otherwise known as the Walkie Talkie. At the top of that building, I can see people up there right now. That is a sky garden and it is totally free uh, to go up there. All the, these tall buildings to your left, that's the City of London skyline. It's one of Europe's largest financial districts. Some of the buildings over there include the Gherkin, the Scalpel, the Cheese Grater, the Can of Han, and as I've already mentioned, the Walkie Talkie. Staying on your left hand side, just on the riverfront, there's this white building behind the trees with six black chimneys on the roof. That is called Water Guard House on your left hand side. Now, anything illegally bought into the United Kingdom, so that could be drugs, alcohol, tobacco, taken to that building on your left, stored in the basement for up to one year, and then it's incinerated, hence the black chimneys on the roof. But um, I've never seen any smoke coming out of them. 
Lots of puns. We do hear they have pretty good Christmas parties, don't they? <laughs> Now, on your right hand side, you might have to strain your eyes to see it because it is camouflaged. <laughs> but if you look hard enough, guys, you might see a warship. Can everyone see that, alright? That's HMS Belfast. Now, she was actually built in the same shipyard as the Titanic, the Harland and Wolf shipyard. Six guns forward, six aft. Uh, they were capable of firing shells 14 land miles. She actually fired some of the first shots during the D-Day landings in Normandy. That's 80 years ago now. Uh, she, she later went on to become the flagship for the United Nations, but um, today she's a, a museum. So if you're into your naval history, the Belfast is well worth a visit. You can explore all nine decks of the vessel, some really good exhibitions on board. Now our stop is on the left, okay, Tower Millennium Pier, but what we're going to do for you is we're going to get you a nice view of Tower Bridge, so straight ahead of us. In a moment we're going to turn the boat to port to, to the left and we'll sort of swing around. Uh, so you'll get a nice view on the right hand side of the uh, of the bridge. As I said earlier, when we side onto the river guys, we are very likely to sort of roll a little bit, so just be really careful. But we'll do our best, we'll get you some nice photo opportunities. Now the, uh, the bridge ahead of you is a unique bridge, okay? It's a twin steel suspension and bascule bridge. The bascules are the centre parts uh, and they rise to allow taller ships into the city of London. There is only one day of the year this bridge definitely will not You've open. Got your own space. And that is the day of the London Marathon. And that's because we have 50,000 people running across the bridge. Personally, I think a little bit of a gap might make the marathon a bit more interesting. This is the halfway point, the legs are getting heavy. <laughs> now the, the towers on the bridge, they were built in 18... 94. They were built in the Gothic style uh, to be in keeping with the Tower of London. I'll tell you about that in a minute. If you took down all the stonework and all the masonry on the bridge, it would remain standing, okay? It's just there for aesthetics. I've got a little story for you about Tower Bridge, okay, I'm going to take you back to December 1952. It was a very foggy day here in London, that December day, and a bus driver called Albert Gunter was going about his day. He was driving south across the bridge. Now, when he got to the middle, he saw through the fog that the bridge was opening. There was about a three foot gap. At this point, what any normal person would do is put their foot on the brake. Albert did not do that. <laughs> he accelerated. And he jumped Tower Bridge. That is a true story. The day the bus driver jumped Tower Bridge. He was actually given a £10 bonus for that. And uh, I think most of that went on his dry cleaning bill. But uh, I think if you did it today, you'd definitely get a sack, wouldn't you? You'd probably end up in prison as well. But that is a true story. The day the bus driver jumped Tower Bridge. The money shot, guys, of course, is to get a bus in the middle of the bridge. So there you go. Uh, another way to see the bridge, the, the walkways at the top, so you can actually go up there uh, and it's actually, it's got glass floor in the middle, so you need a good head for heights. Personally, I think the best way to see Tower Bridge is from the river. Now, we're going to continue to turn here and you're going to get a really nice view on the right-hand side of the Tower of London. Now, this is actually one of my favourite landmarks on the river. There, there's a lot of history in the Tower of London. So the centre part with the four turrets, that's the White Tower, that was built in the 1070s during the reign of William the Conqueror. So there's nearly a thousand years of history of this building on your right. Lots of sections have been added to it over the years and it's had a lot of functions during its lifetime. It's been a fortress, a royal palace, it's even been a zoo, believe it or not. <laughs> but most famously, that building on your right hand side, it's been a place of imprisonment, torture and execution. It's not a place you wanted to end up. If you look just ahead of us on the right, you'll see the words Entry to the Traitor's Gate, dubbed London's first one-way street. If you've been found guilty of treason and they sentenced you to death, they'd have rode you down the river from Westminster. The exact journey you've just done. The only difference being, of course, they probably wouldn't have had a commentary. They'd have taken you through that gate there on your right side, you'd have spent your last night on earth in the tower. The next day, they'd have taken you up to Tower Hill and in front of a crowd of thousands of people, they'd have removed your head from your body. They would have then placed it in boiling tar to preserve it, 
they would have put it on a spike and then displayed your head on the old London Bridge. We don't do that anymore. No, we believe in rehabilitation today. We give them free square meals and a PlayStation instead now. So there's, there's justice for you, isn't it? But if you get a chance, uh, a day out of the tower is, is a great day out. So there you go, Tower of London. Now then, folks, we are shortly going to make our way into the Tower Pier. Uh, do stay in your seats for us. Sometimes when we go alongside the pier, there's a little bit of a bump. Okay, so just stay where you are, uh, and when we're alongside, it'll be all right to, to make your way down. Can I see a show of hands? Is anyone going to Greenwich? Stay with us, because we're going there, so you're welcome to stay with us, all right? If you'd like to return to Westminster, if you change here, you can get a boat back to Westminster from this pier, okay? Because we don't get back there for about two and a half hours. Uh, now, uh, if you've got a big bus ticket, change here, okay, you can get a bus at the top of the hill on your right hand side, okay, it's just the other side of the Tower of London. Have a look around, make sure you've got all your belongings, and please do not leave anything on the boat, okay, it will ruin your day. That does mean if you've bought them, take your children, of course, alright, we don't want them, don't just take your favourite, take them all. I was left on here when, when I was nine, uh, no one came back, I'm 36 now, it's been a very long time. Just uh, one, one final thing, like, firstly thank you very much for your kind attention, it makes our job a lot easier, so thank you very much for that. I haven't finished yet, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> uh, just, just a little bit about a commentary, like, as I said at the start, we, we're not talking right on it, we're, we're members of the crew, it's a bit of a tradition that we pick the microphone up uh, and uh, give you a bit of a light commentary. We, we get some nice feedback. Now, if you've enjoyed the commentary and you'd like to show your appreciation, you're more than welcome uh, to throw a few bob in there. Now, if you don't know what a few bob is, uh, it does, of course, include all your small change, which is your £5 notes, £10 notes, 20s, 50 euros, $100 bills. Worth a try, innit? But uh, don't worry, anything that goes in certainly doesn't get wasted. It goes into the extensive research me and the captain are going to do at the anchor this evening. It's vital research, but someone's got to do it. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Have a great time in London, guys, whatever you do. See you again very soon. Thanks for listening. Cheers, guys. Thank you.